arrived in America in 1973, uh, I didn't know much of, of, about the country or the different kinds of Irish immigrants that had come here over uh, really two, maybe even 300 years. And uh, in the 48 years since then, it's been a never ending learning experience for me, finding out uh, why the immigrants left Ireland and where they went to in America and why they choose one place over another. And I lived in the Philadelphia area for about two years. And my first visit out to the West Coast was with Eugene O'Donnell, the great dairy fiddle player. We went out to, to play at a fesh. Eugene was a famous dancer in his day, as well as a great fiddler. Uh, and we played at the, uh, a fesh, uh, an Irish dancing competition in uh, St. Mary's uh, College in Moraga, close to San Francisco. And we hung out there with the musicians in San Francisco and had a great old first visit. And after that, uh, I started to go more and more often uh, to the West Coast and ended up indeed over the next 40 years playing in every single state uh, in America with various musicians, the Greenfields of America, sometimes Eugene O'Donnell, sometimes Robbie O'Connell and Jimmy Keane. And I found that there was a different story involved with the different Irish people that I met that would come to our concerts in various places, all the way from, say, Kalispell, Montana, down to Tucson, Arizona, and everywhere in between. And if you ask somebody in New Jersey uh, or New York or Washington or Boston uh, why they came out to America from Ireland and stayed, you'd have a fairly predictable story, something like, well, I came to study here and I got involved with uh, my field and got a job offer and and stayed on, or somebody might say, I came out for a summer job and a friend of my uncle's had a pub in uh, the Jersey Shore or uh, in Cape Cod uh, and uh, I stayed for the summer and uh, I met a person who, who eventually became my partner and stayed on and after we had the first child, well, you know, I was here to stay. Something like that, a fairly predictable story. But when I started to go and ask people who turned up at our concerts, say in Denver, Colorado, uh, or San Francisco, or uh, um, you know, Missoula, Montana, or Pocatello, Idaho, and I met an Irish person and we would hang out in the pub afterwards. He would say, well, how did you end up out here? And they'd always say, it's a long story. I was to discover uh, as I started to study more and more about the history of the Irish in America, uh, that there were different waves of Irish immigration at different times. And of course, we, we know a lot now about the waves uh, of migration from the northern counties of Ireland to the southern states of, uh, of Appalachia and about the post-famine migrations, mostly to the big cities of America. But less known were the migrations to the, to the west and, and the northwest. And one of my favorite books uh, written by a man I met just after I arrived in Philadelphia is Hibernia America, written by the late Dennis Clark. And uh, Dennis Clark uh, was a historian, uh, wrote 11 books, um, brought up a, a family of six, moved house every few years, had a full-time job, and yet was always available for a chat or anytime he needed a bit of assistance, uh, Dennis was always there. We became very, very good friends. And I think this book, Hibernia America, which was the first of the Irish American histories to look at the Irish in a nationwide context uh, of migration and settlement, uh, became my Bible. Uh, and here's what he says about, about the Irish in, in, in the Western states. And he talked about desperados. And desperados have always been part of the picture. The individual uh, individuals who went off, uh, adventurers uh, who were governed uh, by, by, by no laws but their own. And uh, he talked about adventurers and desperados in places like Oklahoma and he says the case of desperados was especially rampant there with Emmett Dalton, Mike and Bill Doolan, Morris and Pat O'Malley, and Castle Annie McDermott set against federal marshals, and, uh, and on and on. And he talked about the Western gunmen, became part of the mythology of the West, people like Henry McCarthy, alias Billy the Kid, uh, who killed Frank Cahill in 1877 as his first victim. And he goes on to mention characters like Kid Curry, who he said would ride a thousand miles to 
to kill a man and he wrote about brothels, dance halls and gambling saloons spawning a horde of characters like Chuck a luck Johnny Gallagher who cut men's throats as they bent their heads back to drink the whiskey he bought them. Colourful characters abound in the mythology of the West and a lot of them were Irish. The song I'm going to sing today is a recently written song uh, about uh, an imagined gunslinger, a desperado, a little bit, I suppose, like Billy the Kid. And not all the songs written uh, about, about Irish American life uh, were written at the time that things uh, took place, that events happened. Um, new songs are being written all the time, and the best songs are those which are impeccably researched, like a song that we did earlier in this series, Michael Conway, written by uh, Mick McCauley and, and Seamus Egan, and about the copper mines in Butte, Montana, and the song set against the background uh, of the reality of the Irish working there. And similarly, uh, the song that I've chosen to sing today is called Slip Jigs and Reels. And it's, uh, it's written about an Irish man who went bad. And it's an, an imagined story, uh, which was sparked by a songwriter called Steve Tilston from England, um, seeing a picture on his first visit to Santa Fe of a young Irishman. Uh, at least he, he imagined it was a young Irishman. Uh, and the picture was taken shortly before he disappeared into the desert and was killed by Native Americans. Now, Steve Tilston, he arrived on the folk scene in England just uh, about the time I was leaving to go to America. Uh, and he became a, a folk singer and a guitar player around 1971. Had a brief incursion into the world of rock music, but eventually settled on folk music and has become a magnificent, renowned guitar player playing in a variety of different styles. And has played with a variety of musicians over the years, including stellar guitar players like uh, the late Bert Yanks and John Renburn, who both played in the group Pentangle, they were on the same label, Transatlantic, that the Johnsons were on when I was in the group. And uh, Steve Tilston eventually recorded uh, on that same label himself. He's had a glittering career with a variety of different people. Jez Lowe was one of them. Uh, Maggie Boyle, the great Irish singer, uh, who was born in London, and uh, he performed with Maggie Boyle for over 20 years. And in fact, on an album they made called of Moore and Mesa in 1992. He first uh, wrote and recorded the song Slip Jigs and Reels. He's a renowned songwriter. He's been a member of the group, the Steve Tilston Trio, born in, in uh, Liverpool uh, and grew up in Leicestershire and lived in Bristol for a while, but has traveled all over the joint and uh, writes a variety of songs on different topics and uh, has toured in America and in Australia. I've never actually met Steve Tilston. Uh, because uh, I left at the time that he was starting to emerge. But we've corresponded uh, by, by, by uh, email. And I'm a great admirer of, of, uh, of his songs, particularly the one he wrote about Tom Paine, which was recorded by Fairport Convention, and of course, Slip Jigs and Reels, which I'm going to perform today with Athena Turgus, uh, based in Tuscany, Italy. And uh, Billy McComiskey, uh, the great uh, button accordion player living in Baltimore, Maryland, and harmonies thrown in by the wonderful Liz Hanley in Boston, Massachusetts. Slip jigs and reels. He was only a lad in his grandfather's coat, and so in the lining was a ten shilling note. Goodbye to the family, goodbye to the shore, until I find me fortune. I will see you no more. Then the boat over the ocean tossed about like a cork until one fine morning he sighted New York and he stood on the gangplank and around he did stare, saying, Hello, land of plenty, I have come for me share. And he did like the ladies and the rice and the fall of the ankles and down on the dance floor and the roll of the dice the spinning the wheel but he took most of light in the slip jigs and reels some say it was a piston and others a knife but all are agreed 
there was somebody's wife A dreadful commotion, a terrible fight And he left one man dead and one to two the money On the train to St. Louis, one jump ahead And he kept one eye open and the gun near his head He dreamed of the green fields and the mountains of home Cross and the plains where the buffalo roam. And he did like the ladies at the rise and the fall of the ankles and dresses down on the dance floor. And the round of the dice, the spinning the wheel. But he took most delight in the slip jigs and They called him the kid, and by twenty-one All he had known was the power of the gun And by twenty-four he had shot five men down That got in this way to see ramble around But a bad reputation was a hard thing to bear When mothers pour scorn, small children do stare but he found consolation in flash company For life's not so bad with the girl on your knee And he did like the ladies and the rise and the fall Of the ankles and the dresses down on the dance floor And the round of the dice, the spinning the wheel But he took most the light in the slip jigs and Down on the dance floor And the round of the dice The spinning 